Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with uh, Heart Attack, Stroke, and Cancer Prevention. Again, why worry about a cure when you can prevent it in the first place? Um, today we're going to talk about coffee. <clears throat> For the biochemists out there, there are four types of, um, of molecules called aromatic heterocycles. Uh, nicotine is one of our things that we've mentioned before, and it's... Uh, often associated with caffeine. Uh, remember, the, uh, our old friend niacin was made by oxidizing this second ring on the nicotine. Um, and again, you can see there are some similarities with caffeine or theobromine. That's about all we're going to cover on the organic chemistry side because I don't really think there's a lot there today. Uh, coffee, has it, is it good or bad? Well, there's been a lot of literature and uh, debate about it. There's been uh, a lot of statements that it was. Um, however, it, it was previously blamed for many ills uh, ranging from behavioral issues to heart attack and stroke. And again, we're, we're, sp we're specifically focused on heart attack, stroke, and cancer here. And it was originally linked to it. However, there were problems in the study design. One of the biggest problems was the um, failure to notice the association of, of other habits that did impact heart attack and stroke, like smoking and uh, coffee consumption. When you go back and you do, redo the studies, which have done, been done recently, you find that <clears throat> um, uh, there's not a, a causal relationship between coffee and heart attack and stroke. In fact, it does appear to be somewhat protective, uh, at least up to about four cups per day. Protective of heart attack, stroke, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, cancers even. Now, how strong is this protective effect? Well, look around you. I mean, it's pretty clear that drinking coffee is not a strong uh, way, way to keep from having any of these diseases. Um, it's a very mild effect. I think the, the bigger significance is that they don't cause it like we used to think. Uh, as often happens, genetics plays a role in here too. You can get uh, genetically tested to see uh, if you're a rapid metabolizer of caffeine. Now, speaking of caffeine, is there a really a such thing as caffeine addiction or is that just a perception? No, it's real. There is caffeine addiction. It's uh, mild compared to a lot of other addictions. Um, it's 24 to 48 hours of headache, dizziness, anxiety, just feeling bad uh, and jittery. Now, again, uh, coffee's not the only thing that has caffeine in it. Uh, there's some thoughts that tea was really um, named with the theobromide. Again, theobromide and caffeine are the same, the same molecule. Uh, so everything that applies for caffeine, for coffee, applies for caffeine in tea. Uh, there's also some other things that may actually contribute to uh, cardiovascular health in tea, especially some of the uh, green teas. Flavonoids, or catectins, which are a type of flavonoid, they may actually decrease cardiovascular inflammation. Now, <clears throat> won't go any deeper into that, but again, there's something for that, that caffeine may be protective, coffees and teas. Now, before you go out and invest in a $50 Starbucks card, let's look at something here. <clears throat> My favorite drink when uh, Starbucks first came out and they were uh, selling these was the Mocha Frap. Now, a grande mocha frappe has, what, 410 calories and how many carbohydrates? 65 carbohydrates. That's like, um, that's as many carbohydrates as Richard Bernstein would recommend in an entire day. So, there are some problems with uh, too many calories, too many, uh, too many carbohydrates. Well, what about tea? Um, Arizona peach iced tea was always my favorite. 
again, now it's maybe not so bad when you look at first, only uh, 24 grams of carbohydrate and 90 calories. However, this is where uh, Arizona tea always got you. They're talking about eight ounces. When's the last time you had an, you bought an eight ounce um, contain and drank an eight ounce container of Arizona iced tea? Never. It's always 12, 16, 24. So again, three times that, you're looking at uh, 60s and 70s in terms of uh, carbohydrates. So again, be very careful about uh, the, the liquids that you drink. They also, speaking of carbohydrates, liquid carbohydrates do have a major impact on insulin, uh, on blood glucose level, as well as uh, insulin release. Um, <clears throat> Now, speaking of uh, blood glucose, insulin release, that sort of thing, you know the oral glucose tolerance test that we do? It's basically 75 grams of carbohydrate. That is two Pepsis. So we haven't mentioned sodas yet. What about sodas or carbonated drinks? As I just said, um, many sodas uh, are just full of carbohydrates. So you've got that issue. But there was another question, though, about um, carbonated drinks. Do they actually cause bone loss? And that was supposed to be um, based on the uh, phosphoric acid. Uh, the reality is that probably isn't true. However, the bone loss does appear to be uh, true, or decreased bone, uh, bone uh, mineral density uh, for women does appear to be true with carbonated drinks. Certain ones, more like soda, not so much with, um, with seltzer. Now, why would that be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a uh, quantity effect. Maybe there are some other issues. Maybe we'll cover that in another video. Thank you.